I've got, I've got my little stick here, which I can go like this across and hand over seamlessly to the one, <laughs> one of the, the only air system who um, we have been working with. Jenny's uh, an artist, um, um, works in glass. She's also a member of Plymouth Energy Community. She's come through the Plymouth Energy Community's Peck Pal scheme, which is where we effectively try and coach and nurture people to take, take action. Um, and um, she's now working with us as a director of um, in Art and Energy and as part of Art and Energy Collective. So anything more, I'm going to hand over to Jenny. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenny from Art and Energy. Um, the three of us in this photo here are just kind of the, the central core of Art and Energy. We're actually a collective, um, a very informal kind of group of technologists, educationalists, artists, tinkerers. Basically, you could all be, we would love to invite you all to be part of the Art and Energy Collective, um, because just by being here this evening, it shows that you, you have a concern and you share a concern for the state of our world. Um, and we are approaching that through an artistic way. Um, so we're using creativity to generate conversation about energy use and ultimately to lead to behaviour change towards a greener and fairer world. So I'm going to start with a short overview of our organisation and then move on to the Moths to a Flame project that we're working on in partnership with PEC. So we began by thinking about solar panels um, and that they're an increasing part of our world, and that's fantastic. Uh, but the way that they're aesthetic, it often results in people objecting to them. For some, these dark blacky blue squares are just plain boring and uninspiring, whilst others passionately and vocally object to our countryside being homogenized by geometric industry. Now, these responses are largely due to the aesthetics. And that's a barrier to appreciating this fantastic technology, judging the book by its cover, if you like. So we began a lengthy research project. Did you know, for example, that solar cells come in a range of beautiful colours, that they can be cut to intricate shapes and that the glass surface onto which they are built can be embellished through engraving and etching? And throughout this process, we worked with one of our other directors, Katie Shanks, a researcher at the University of Exeter's Environment and Sustainability Institute, and she tested the effect of the efficiency of the cells. Now, the standard blue squares are by far and away the most efficient, but colour and cutting didn't seem to have as big an impact as you might think, and sandblasting the surface actually can increase the efficiency, which is really exciting. But as artists, we're less interested in the numbers as much as the emotive response than a, that an object has. And so this is the first of our solar artworks. Uh, Chloe made this piece, Dawn Breaks. In fact, to our knowledge, it's the first solar artwork to be created in the UK. This is actually one of the rewards for our crowdfunder, but more on that later. It contains, oops, sorry, go back one. It contains um, two different colors of solar cell, cut to shape and with a painted mask to hide the wiring. I hope you agree that it's a thing of beauty. Now we've exhibited this and other solar artworks at a number of events and audiences have found them attractive, intriguing and desirable. But what makes it really exciting is that when placed in sunlight, it creates 12 volts of electricity. And with a little step down converter on the back, this will charge a USB device. I personally find this so exciting. For most of us, solar, pal solar panels are very much out of reach on roofs, um, behind fences, in solar arrays, in fields. And in fact, a lot of work goes into making them less visible. But we at Art and Energy feel that renewable energy is this amazing technology that's already making a huge difference to our planet. And so it should be celebrated. I first came across Art and Energy at a session they ran with PEC and Plymouth College of Art Fab Lab in 2018, where we were encouraged to imagine an energy artwork for Plymouth, something that would generate awareness of the energy that so many of us take for granted. The idea is that by becoming aware, we start to ask questions and to make positive, conscious changes to our energy use and behaviour. Now, this particular artwork that we were thinking about is yet to be created, but the two hour workshop totally opened my mind and I now look at the world through a, a very different lens. Since then, we've run a number of solar artwork making sessions and each time I've witnessed the same thing. So participants arrive with a preconceived idea that solar panels are complicated and the realm of industry. 
then they realize that they're actually surprisingly simple in their construction. And then the utter joy and amazement when their solar panel creates a charge and even more so when they plug a device in. So plugging in a mobile phone and your mobile phone goes ping and you know that the, the soldering and the whole process that you've gone through over what is quite a lengthy day and quite frustrating at times has created uh, an object that can charge your mobile phone or light a light bulb or, you know, it's just amazing. Um, and the magic of creativity really does break through barriers. So one topic at the heart of art and energy, which is what we've been talking about, um, Ed and Al have both been talking about, is this ethos um, about the climate emergency and the need for us as a species to change our behaviour, to reduce the damage we're inflicting on our planet. Now, this thought process can be unhealthfully all consuming, leading to overwhelming levels of anxiety that in turn lead to inactivity and the inability to see a positive route forward. I personally have definitely been in that place a number of times over the years. Eco-anxiety can be a really lonely situation to find yourself in. Feeling like you're the only one or one of very few who can hear the alarm bells, but feeling that as an individual, you have no power to bring about change. And we've found that creativity can be so very helpful in breaking down that anxiety barrier, offering a positive and hopeful route forward. So when we heard that COP26 was coming to the UK for the first time ever, we felt that it was vital that we, the normal little people, be represented and have a voice that might just reach the ears of world leaders and um, industry and, and people who have the power to bring about that change and encourage us all to, to make those changes. And so we talked to our friends at PEC and they agreed. And so Moths to a Flame as a project was born. For a while, we've been thinking about the moth's notoriously difficult relationship with light as being similar to our own complex relationship with energy. Did you know that the collective noun for a group of moths is a whisper? Well, our idea is to collect the many whispers of hope that we all have as individuals and turn those into a roar for change. We launched, launched last November and were overwhelmed by the response we received. The plan was to run a series of community and school workshops to decorate thousands of UV laser cut moths. These would form a mass participatory art installation in the Glasgow Botanic Gardens to coincide with COP26, now basically. But then of course COVID arrived, cancelling our workshops and postponing COP, difficult times. In actual fact, with a grant from the Arts Council, continued support from PEC and some wonderful volunteers from the Devon Moth Group, 2020 has been an opportunity to reach more people as we've introduced some new digital artworks. We commissioned an augmented reality colouring sheet. You print it off, colour it in with your design, use a mobile phone or tablet to bring it to life and record your whisper of hope to share with us. This is Ollie and Erin in the garden colouring in their moth to bring to life. My hope for the future is that people will be kinder to our planet by polluting it less. We've also run a series of free Zoom sessions called Watch Moths. These are double bill events featuring a mixture of art activities and energy advice. On the Friday evening, we join our mothers as they set up their moth traps, then return on the Saturday to see who's visited. I certainly had no idea how amazing and varied moths are, and this is linked beautifully to learning more about ecology and our dependence on the sun's energy. We also commissioned our collective member Matt Harvey to write a poem for Moths to a Flame, and unexpectedly some of our Zoom audience were inspired to write their own poems. So in the spring we will be holding a poetry slam of moth and energy inspired poems. Please do encourage friends, family and, and pop pen to paper yourself and send us your words. In September, we exhibited our new artwork at Plymouth Art Weekender. This is an installation in the Caterpillar Room at the Plot on Union Street. It was accompanied by an atmospheric soundtrack. This is a small version of what we plan to take to Glasgow. Now, with social distancing, we obviously couldn't get hands-on creative at the event, but we had lots of things for people to take away, including a free activity pack with craft ideas, drawing activities and word games. 
and included in the free packs was a copy of A Moth's Whisper, a beautiful illustrated storybook written especially for us by the lovely Miranda Barlow. It tells the story of Marnie, the yellow underwing moth, who's confused by all the bright lights at night and is one, is one of the rewards for our pledges for our crowdfunder. So that brings me nicely on to our crowdfunder. Now we're raising funds to continue our work in Plymouth and further afield. With another year until COP26, we have the potential to reach a lot more people. This project really is relevant to anyone who switches on a light or plugs in an electrical device. We need to empower everyone to make changes, especially world leaders. We're using creativity to give people a chance to slow down and think, to reconnect with the world around them, opening the door to further thought and ultimately constructive action. Pledges to our crowdfunder can choose from rewards ranging from sponsorship of a solar panel at the Peck Ernestettle Solar Array to receiving a copy of the Moth's Whisper or a creative pack to decorate your own UV moth for the installation, an art by, artwork by one of the Art and Energy Collective members or even your very own solar artwork to hang on your wall and use to charge your devices. So I'd really like to encourage you to um, get involved, um, contact us with your ideas, encourage friends, family and your wider networks to get involved with the, the Moths to a Flame project. There's all sorts of, of fun ways to do so. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Art and Energy. Um, it's really exciting times. Whenever there's a kind of crowdfunder running or you're raising money in this way um, from you know the crowd or from the community, um, it is, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, you know, there's, a, there's a bit of warmth that kind of warms up inside me as, as you see people starting pledging support for your ideas and um, the fund, the crowdfunder is, is going really well um, and we're really pleased to have got just under 10% in the first few weeks um, and yeah uh, we're really hoping that there will be some two things that listeners tonight will do um, one is to to pledge um, and if you, if you can't pledge um, please do share 